again, Ray, for being with us. This is going to be a fascinating uh, session. And if you are an engineer, if you are a professional race team, if you want to learn about aerodynamics, I don't think there is anybody more qualified than Ray uh, to tell you about it and also to do it in a very edu educational way. Um, you know, I had the chance to meet with Ray many, many times over the years, and he has a very natural and easy way to explain the most difficult things because he's a lot smarter than I am. He's a, you know, great engineer and, and great uh, uh, brain. So Ray, I think it's 3.30 here in California. So Brad, I will hand it to you and you guys go. All right, thank you very much, Francis. We appreciate that. And uh, again, if you're just joining us, want to welcome you once again to Online Race Industry Week. Uh, my name is Brad Gilley with Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio, Performance Racing Network. Very happy uh, to be hosting this session with Ray Leto. And uh, just read a quick bio on you, Ray, and talk a little bit about what Total Sim is and, uh, and kind of let you take it away. And if folks have questions, they can do so. Uh, in the chat as well. But Ray is a 25 plus year veteran of open wheel racing. He has a BS in aerospace engineering from Penn State, which he got in 1985. Began his career by working his way up through the motorsports ranks as a mechanic and an engineer. As a key member of Team Ray Hall, Leto spent 15 in many roles, including race engineer, aerodynamicist, chief range engineer, technical director, cart team manager, and general manager. And there's so much more about you as well, uh, but an impressive resume for sure. But Total Sim is a computational fluid dynamics consulting and solutions provider, supplying expert insight to global clients in the automotive, motorsports, aerospace, process engineering, energy, and marine sectors. And basically, Ray, you guys, uh, it says here on your product page on EPAR Trade, you take uh, ideas from initial concepts to high performance reality by combining our real world engineering experience with advanced CFD technology, and you make it easy to accelerate design and development through automated CFD workflows and analysis and self-service applications. And I am hugely fascinated uh, with <laughs> what you guys do and certainly look forward to uh, hearing about it. So um, I, I know that's kind of the broad strokes, but tell us a little bit more about Total Sim. Sure. Yeah, I've got a, uh, I, I really appreciate the, uh, first off, the introduction and being included in this. And Francis is way too kind with his compliments. Um, it's part of his job, but uh, it, it's really flattering. And, and thanks, uh, Brad, for, for the great introduction. I think I'm going to uh, try and share my screen, run through a quick presentation. One great thing about CFD is all the colorful pictures we can do. So uh, I'll try and uh, see if we can do that. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, sir. All right, great. So yeah, like you said, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a background uh, on ourselves and our company. Uh, we're motorsports people. Uh, Total Sim uh, basically can trace its roots back to the late 90s when Adrian Reynard and Dr. Rob Lewis started Advantage CFD as part of Reynard, uh, became part of BAR F1, which became Honda F1. And then in 2007, Rob took what was the outside consulting portion of that CFD core group left some key guys with the, the, the F1 team and took all the outside consulting uh, and created Total Sim. Part of the outside consulting involved working with Honda here in Ohio at their R&D center. Uh, so Rob and I had talked about uh, kind of branching out into the US and starting a, a, a company uh, here as well. Since then, Total Sim now has uh, an office in uh, Japan. Uh, Total Sim in the UK has built several other businesses, auto research partners that's developing a straight line testing facility, a Silverstone sports engineering hub that contains a, a cycling and Olympic sliding sport wind tunnel, very specific wind tunnel, a lot of CFD and work around that, and Vortec, which uh, developed skin suits for uh, mostly Olympic athletes. Here in the US, um, like, uh, like you said in the introduction, I spent most of my career uh, at, uh, uh, in IndyCar and Champ Car, mostly at Ray Hall, um, doing everything from race engineering, um, I was happy to see one of my uh, race drivers on earlier. Brian Herter was, was a driver I worked with for four years at Ray Hall. Um, and uh, so lots of wind tunnel testing, things like that. My uh, business partner, Nathan Eagles, uh, came out of uh, the CFD side of things. He, uh, he uh, did some time in aerospace and then worked at Advantage CFD and BAR. Uh, then he started the CFD department at Williams F1 um, and was there for a decade running that before we got together over here. So we have a diverse background in physical testing, wind tunnel testing, CFD. 
And so mostly what we do is uh, aero development. Like you said, we do, we get involved in all kinds of things. We've diversified from, from automotive and aerospace into uh, all kinds of things, marine, Olympic sports, uh, industry, uh, anything that has uh, gas, fluids, water, uh, we can model it with uh, computational fluid dynamics. We're doing a lot of uh, general aviation and drone work as well. Um, and, and that's, uh, that's fairly interesting, concentrated in our uh, uh, small office we have out in California. Um, so we still get involved in some physical testing and a few other things as well, but our core business is uh, trying to apply this motorsports mentality of quick product development to different industries and, and move people forward with that, uh, that kind of mindset, which we, which we find uh, Interestingly, for those of us who've been in motorsports our whole life, when we get out of it into other industries, things move pretty slow. So um, we try and change that. So what, what we wanted to talk about uh, today quickly was uh, uh, basically what can we do with aerodata and how do we get it? So there's, you know, right now, um, most of us know that you can, you can get data, uh, you know, on track or in a wind tunnel, either full scale or, or scale. Uh, or now with computational fluid dynamics or CFD. So each of these things have different um, you know, pros and cons. They have different cost levels. Obviously on track is the real car, it's you're out there, but you have to have good data acquisition. It's hard to get repeatable data. You know, maybe you go to a specific straight line testing facility to really hone in on getting data. During a race weekend, it's quite difficult. Uh, full scale wind tunnel testing, again, it's the real car, but it costs, you know, what a real car costs. We got to build prototype parts. Um, full scale wind tunnel uh, testing can range anywhere from, you know, $500 an hour for a, a, a small tunnel to, you know, uh, 3,500 bucks an hour or something like that. So very expensive endeavor. Um, scale model wind tunnel testing is great if you have a model and you have access to it. Um, if there's a model you can rent that simulates your car, that's great too. Uh, but if you have to start from scratch, quite expensive. CFD is somewhere in between, you know, we've got, uh, we can, there's barriers to entry there too. So you need experts, you need 3D geometry. We need to get that car from the physical world into the virtual world. Um, but these are, these are what people are doing today, top level motorsports. And we see this moving down into the lower series right now. So what can we do with AeroData? Why do we do it? Well, my big thing is getting people to understand what they have and optimize it. So it's not so much always going out and trying to invent something new or design a new part or design your way out of a problem. Sometimes just optimizing what you have can, can move you to the front of the grid or move you up the grid substantially. So you have to understand that first. And that's just like, uh, let's say your dampers uh, or your, uh, your engine, your transmission. You're going to go to a, a shock dyno. You're going to understand that. We're going to go, uh, you know, on an engine dyno or a chassis dyno and understand where we are with our mapping and things like that. Same thing for aero. We want to go and just characterize the car, understand where it is. Then we can go, like uh, the next presentation Danny Newland will tell you for sure, is that once you have these maps for these things, you, then you want to go and find out what your trade-offs are. How can we optimize it? So uh, we're going to find out that these maps uh, that we get maybe tell us to run one thing at one track, something else at another one. So we're definitely gonna have different trade-offs for L over D uh, between you know, a street course at St. Petersburg or a speedway at Daytona. These are, you know, even if you're running the same car, your trade-offs and your optimization. I, I threw up a couple of color plots here that I thought were really cool. One of the, the kids at Ohio State University that's running the, uh, the aero department or the aero side of their Formula SAE thing, uh, Matt Kronheimer did some nice plots, which illustrates what I think is, you know, a race engineering here and trying to look at trade-off plots of what would happen. This is L over D curves versus lap time for them. And as you make your way up through these contour plots, you can, you can prove that you're making the car better. And you can do this virtually before you even go to the racetrack. So, you know, that's what we want. That's what we want to do with aero data, whether we go to the wind tunnel or we go to CFD, we want to map it. So we're going to, with a typical car, let's say like this F3 car we've got here, you would be mapping a range of ride heights, y'all, different attitudes, and then building that base map that, that we could then feed into something like Danny's chassis sim or something and look at these trade-off studies uh, and do some optimization and say, where are we running our front ride height? 
could we could we do better by changing the pitch of the car and optimize through the middle of the corner that downforce or down the straight and minimize the drag things like that so what is CFD? Basically, what are we talking about here? So really, CFD is actually just a virtual wind tunnel, essentially. So we're taking, we're, we're taking a, a 3D model of the car, moving it into a virtual world, and then we're using physics and math to solve the fluid flow around it, solve the forces on the vehicle, and then better understand it. So it involves going through a process of taking 3D geometry, uh, what we call meshing, cleaning it up, building that volume of fluid around it, and then solving a bunch of math on a supercomputer. Um, so the barriers to entry here are getting that 3D geometry into the virtual world. Do we have CAD? Do we need to do a scan? Um, you do need some expertise in this. This is not picking up um, you know, some app on your phone and, and learning how to use it in a few days. Um, there is a lot of expertise that goes into it. And then of course you need the software and you need hardware. I mean, typically for these top end programs, we tend to solve our cases on um, somewhere between 200 and 400 cores per case. So this is a, a true supercomputer. Um, and we're fortunate in the fact that we have a couple thousand cores in house. We have a fiber connection to a supercomputer center here in central Ohio that's one of the best in the country. Um, so we have access to thousands and thousands of cores. Um, and each of those cores typically cost about five cents per hour to rent or operate. So not a cheap exercise, but again, keep it in perspective with running the real race car. So what extra can CFD do versus going to the wind tunnel or the racetrack? One thing is the flow visualization. We can see what's going on. We can cut through the fluid. We can color it. We can look at the flow on the surface. Um, we can do optimization. We, so we can try many, many, many things in the virtual world that cost us a lot less than building prototypes and going to the racetrack. Um, then we can do things that we can't do on the racetrack or even in the wind tunnel, especially in the wind tunnel. High, high yaw angles like this uh, dirt late model that we've got a, a picture of here that uh, we work with a, a guy named Matt Furman uh, on, on this model. He's a CAD guy, works for Siemens. So he drew a great model and we, we did some interesting stuff. 15 degree all angle is not something you can do in any full scale wind tunnel these days. And that's what these things run at all the time. So why would you be testing something at an attitude or a situation that you're not actually gonna see in real life? Some other things are doing traffic. So this middle plot, we've got uh, a picture of what happens around, uh, for instance, a, a, a cup type car here where um, when there's uh, interaction between cars. So we can't do that in a wind tunnel, have more than one car. Uh, curve flow. Is in, it's an interesting thing in the fact that when a car is going through a corner, uh, it's not the same as testing at a slight yaw angle. Um, the, the flow is actually curved. The car is taking a curved trajectory. So that's something that you can do in computational world that you can't do in a, in a wind tunnel. So those are some interesting things. So obviously one of the best things is, is uh, visualization. Um, we typically run uh, hundreds and hundreds of movies and pictures on every case we run so that we can compare them. Um, so you can really explore what's going on. Um, this obviously from the, the real world having a smoke wand or, or kind of that would be analogous to that or putting tufts on the car, but we can do this over and over again uh, in the computer. Another thing is optimization. So we can, we can morph and bend uh, shapes, uh, like it's clay or, or uh, you know, a pliable material, and then set up, a, set up basically a study that's called a design of experiments type study where you uh, uh, parameterize the geometry in a way that you think you can control it. And then we take basically a shotgun approach to it. And we, it's almost like a, a, a Monte Carlo or whatever, where we're just gonna roll the dice and try every single permutation and combination, come up with a huge scatter plot and find out that, that that front of L over D that, that increases our performance. So I, I wanted to just give a couple examples of uh, types of engagements that we, we see in the industry these days or over the last few decades and, and how that's changing. Uh, and we've had you know, large, large scale engagements with like factory type racing programs and original equipment manufacturers for their factory type work. 
Uh, those are large scale things that are over hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. We do some meet, see some medium scale things, which could be from a top level professional racing team or other uh, organization that's interested in this type of stuff. Uh, and then smaller scale stuff. And we're seeing a lot more of this at a lower scale uh, or lower tier racing where people have uh, uh, you know, interest in, in, in finding this information. And most of those projects are 10,000 or under. Um, then we also have, we've also been supporting DIY type things where people uh, have some exper experience in this or they've done projects with us, then they want, then they want to start doing it themselves. So, uh, you know, a large scale project would be something like uh, our engagement with Honda. We've, we've worked uh, on and off with Honda Racing since this company started. And, uh, you know, we've done, done things like, you know, aero kit stuff for IndyCar and whatnot. These are, these are big, large projects that, you know, akin to Formula One or something where we're designing an entire program from scratch. So, and these are obviously kind of sky the limit type things. Same thing in, in Cup. We, uh, we were fortunate to be involved with one of the OEs back uh, in the 2013 when the, when the new Gen 6 came around. Really cool application of CFD um, in a design process where you can start giving design cues. There were, there were stylists involved so because they're supposed to be brand cues on these type of cars. So you want to give feedback to those designers so that they're you know, not hurting the performance of the car, but still keeping that character that they wanted in it. Uh, and that was all done in kind of a virtual world before real prototypes were built and clay models were done. Um, a medium scale project. We've been uh, at, at Total Sim, we've been working with iRacing for most of our existence here, eight or 10 years. Um, and if you think about it, it's a perfect application for, you know, a virtual racing, putting a car in a virtual wind tunnel is perfect, right? So uh, we've taken, uh, when, when they came out with dirt, uh, their dirt uh, over a year ago, uh, we did a lot of work with them to, to, to develop aero maps of these cars. Um, and this goes back to the first um, slide I was talking about the uses of aero data. We have to characterize the car to be able to, to simulate it. And in particular, this, this type of engagement is, is, uh, is perfect because there's no, no known data for some of these cars. So, but they have 3D geometry and they have a need to understand the physics and how the car reacts. Um, and we got really good feedback on that. Recently, we've just worked on their new uh, USF 2000 and Pro 2000 uh, cars, full mapping on, on that stuff. Smaller scale projects. We've done a lot of uh, land speed cars where you know, somebody's got a particular small problem or they want to check stability on the salt flats. You know, what's the car like if it gets out of shape? Um, some of these have come with CAD data. Um, Alan Johnson, those guys uh, have supplied CAD, other, other people. Um, you know, it's a scanning project where we have to go out and scan the real car and then throw it in the virtual world. Um, so that, yeah, and that kind of brings us to the, the how do you get that 3D data? Um, and if you don't have it anymore, there's, uh, People out there that can reverse engineer or scan the car, we're one of them. There's lots of, lots of vendors out there doing it and they do it really well uh, where you can take exactly what you've got uh, and in short order um, and for you know, uh, several thousand dollars, you can basically create a full CAD model of your car uh, and then we can push that right into the, uh, right into the virtual world. Um, and then the DIY side. So we, we, uh, we develop our own software, which is an open source software. It's a variant of an open source uh, project that's out there that's been uh, specified for uh, or specifically altered to uh, work better what, or how we feel it should work in the motorsports and, and automotive world. Um, and we have worked with people. We have this installed at major uh, um, original equipment manufacturers, large auto companies that use it for their drag prediction. Um, so once we've worked with somebody, we can kind of help them set up their own CFD department, train them how to do things. Um, one good example of that is uh, NASCAR itself. NASCAR R&D uses our setup uh, and Eric Jacuzzi there in his aero department uh, has used our software. We don't see any of the results. They do all their own work. They do multi-car work. They do design work. So the, the, the genesis for this new, a uh, lot of the aerodynamic design on the new car that's coming up in, uh, well, I say 21, <laughs> it's 22 now, thanks to 2020. Um, but yeah, so there's, that's a, a good example of how we've worked with someone and then kind of set them off on their own to, uh, to expand. We've, we've got a new option too, where we've got uh, kind of like a, um, 
um, a TurboTax kind of way of doing things that if you, you kind of click your way through a web interface and uh, if you are a, a team or a manufacturer that is con in control of their 3D CAD, um, we have a way now where you can upload all that. It has all of our best practice in the, in the background in a black box um, that we've exposed a little bit of, but basically you can focus on being a designer, not have to worry about being a CFD expert and get all this post-processing and data back and treat it like a real virtual wind tunnel. Upload your geometry, get the data back, just like you would go into the, the wind tunnel. And, and then we display all the results in, in what we've called a results tool. So um, it makes it easier to analyze and, and look at things. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that was uh, my short presentation, Brad, and, and uh, hopefully uh, I, uh, I uh, educated some people on what, what's going on out there in, in uh, the CFD and aero world, and, and uh, um, maybe we've come up with some questions or something that, that someone has. Yeah, a couple of things, um, a couple of things from the chat. Uh, let's see, uh, Steve Shelley just says, uh, hang on, I lost, there we go. Uh, great to see Ray, first met him in 1987 when he was prepping Carol Smith's son, Super V. He was a genius then too. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is what I came for, is all the compliments from Fred Seask in the audience. I didn't see the audience, I swear. <laughs> That's funny. Um, a, a couple real questions. It says, Ray, remind me, do you use Sculptor? And uh, that was from Paul Glessner. Yeah, well, we used to use uh, Sculptor, we ha and we still do on occasion. Sculptor, uh, thanks for the question, Paul, um, uh, is a specific software that you use to manipulate CAD. So you can say, take your initial design and then treat it like it was clay and morph it and push it and pull it. And then you can do that in a, in a structured way where you can set up the, like I was showing with the optimization, where we can push and pull that. Uh, and there's more than one type of software to do that. Sculptor is one of the originals and uh, they're still very good at it. Uh, there's others like ANSA from Beta CAE and even some CAD native CAD software has that ability now to push and pull uh, just like you would in the wind tunnel, you know, banging on a piece of metal or scraping on a piece of clay. Okay. Uh, Derek Dixon wants to know if the PowerPoint would be available if someone were to request it. Uh, yeah, I think we can do that. There's a few things in there that I might have to uh, to uh, blur out, but um, yeah, and we've got some uh, info like that on our on our website, and it might you've maybe spurred me to actually just post it up there. Okay, and then um, Tarek, uh, I can't see the full name here. Said, how important is validation of your computations, and how is that generally done? Well, it's it's a big deal because uh, just like anything else, um, you have to kind of have some anchor in reality, right? So. You can't just go off and, and make a, uh, you know, a model and then assume it's correct. You have to have some anchor. So, you know, for us having, having a, a couple decades in, in doing this, we've developed our process based on trying to get it to correlate. Uh, and we feel pretty confident that our best practice can go straight to the racetrack. But nonetheless, we're always constantly looking at that. So if we have the opportunity to work with a top level team or an OE, and go to uh, you know, a full-scale wind tunnel like wind shear, where we're running the real car on a rolling road, um, we do do a lot of correlation with that. Um, aside from that, you know, going out and just trying to correlate to the um, to straight line data or on track data is possible as well. And I think Danny in the next segment might even talk about some of that. That's a lot of how he builds his simulations too, is like that correlation exercise or um, you know, reverse engineering that that information from the data that's available to you, but it's really important. And I think um, the the other point to make there too is that if you go test a straight line, you go to wind shear, maybe you do a scale model test, and you do a CFD. Each one of those things gives you completely different <laughs> answers sometimes, uh, and usually for good reasons. The physics is not always the same in all these places, and um, you know, there's compromises that are made and when you're, when you're uh, you know, in a scale tunnel or versus a, a full scale, you know, these things are, are for very good reasons going to give you slightly different numbers. So um, sometimes, you know, more data is more confusion. So you always have to have that kind of bridge to understand that, you know, and get comfortable with 
yeah, I kind of understand the offset between CFD and, and my on track data or my wind shear data or whatever it is. And then just make sure that you understand it so you can continually progress your designs forward uh, with confidence. But yeah, it's a, it's a constant battle. Well, Ray, I have to say one thing I think you've definitely shown with your presentation is number one, you can describe this in a way that just about anybody can understand. But well, number two, the efficiencies in time, in cost, you know, in, you know, it's quickly learning if something is not right, you know, versus actually building something to figure out it's right, um, just seem incredible and would be a huge asset to any race team out there. Yeah, I think we, I think that's a good point, Brad. We see going forward that more and more of this virtual prototyping is the way big industry is going to, uh, to take more wax at it before you build that first prototype and, and, you know, hit the ground with what your best guess is right to start with. Yeah, well, I do want to remind folks they can go to epartrade.com, um, sign up if you haven't. It just takes a couple of minutes. Uh, you can go to the product page uh, for Total Sim as well and, and just literally request information from them directly from there and uh, would encourage you to do that. But what an amazing presentation. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Thanks. Ray. And thank you, Brad. Thanks, thank you. Too. Ray, uh, within the, uh, the chat, someone asked for the PDF of the presentation. So just, you know, tweak it however you want, send it over and we'll upload it uh, on the platform. Uh, there is okay. a section that's called, uh, you know, uh, technical paper. And uh, if you're watching us right now, all you need to do is when we have it from Ray, we'll upload it there and you'll be able to download the presentation within the total seal uh, for five. So thank you uh, very much. Registering on ePartrade is easy. Fill out your name, email, phone number, and create a secure password. Next, select your business type. Choose supplier if you're looking to display products or services and connect with buyers. Choose racing business if you're looking to find new parts and connect with suppliers. Choose race team if you own or are a member of a professional racing team. Begin typing your company name. We most likely already have your company in our database, which you can select from the drop-down. Then, enter your job title. Choose claim company if you'll be editing your company profile. Other members of your company can choose join company if they'd like to use ePartrade as well. You can view and agree to our terms of use here. If you'd like to receive our weekly newsletter, choose Accept. Click Register Now and your registration will be submitted for approval. You'll need to confirm your email once it goes through. To keep our platform industry only, you'll be approved shortly after. If we require additional proof of business, we'll reach out. Welcome to ePartrade.